What you're seeing is not me. What you're seeing is an image made up of tiny dots on a television screen. See, deep down, I'm a thousand points of light. And by manipulating those points, we can make any image change color, size, or position. We can even put an image on your television without using a camera at all. It just takes computers to control those tiny dots as they control so much else. Our simplest jobs today are computer-driven, largely because of the remarkable shrinking of computer hardware. Only 40 years ago, it would have taken a computer half the size of a tennis court to perform any of these ordinary tasks depicted in this exhibit at the National Museum of American History. The museum's director is Roger Kennedy. We're making computers smaller at the same time they make even faster computation. Today, that tennis court-sized computer with 140,000 watts of electricity and 30 tons of machinery and 18,000 vacuum tubes could be packed in a laptop like this. Technological advance in what we call the information age permits machines in the service of human imagination to do some wonderful things. Raw computing power combined with a new invention called the geometry engine has enabled electrical engineers in California to make imagination tangible. The water creature from the abyss is just the beginning. Bud, you haven't seen anything yet. What all those images have in common is that they came to life in computers designed and built by a company called Silicon Graphics. Jim Clark is chairman of the board. We realized that you needed the ability to couple computing with graphics if you were going to engage the human being in the right way. The human being is a very visual creature. We want the visual system to be stimulated, and that's what you get when you have a fancy graphic system. Those fancy systems are called graphic workstations. They contain as many as eight processors working together with a special chip they call a geometry engine. It does most of the work of drawing pictures on the screen. Three years it took to design those first integrated circuits. My first student, Mark Hanna, and I are the ones who, who basically did those designs. I guess people might tend to think of scientists and engineers as having a very structured, logical thought process. But I think the really interesting things, the really interesting inventions, are not arrived at that way. The process, says Mark Hanna, needs both information and imagination. My fellow Americans. Ten years ago, the most common graphics display was line drawing. And then hardware was developed so that you could actually do solid renderings, but they were faceted. And then that evolved so that you could actually do smooth shading and more accurately represent curved surfaces. And that's kind of where we are now. This is a program called Mike the Talking Head. So we could control the blinking of the eyes and smiling and to make it open his mouth in different ways. It's really funny with this program. If you, if you leave it alone for a while, Mike starts getting sleepy. And his eyes start to droop a little bit. And then, then eventually his head will tilt back and his mouth will be hanging open just slowly asleep. And then there's the Academy Award winning creature from the abyss. Its design and structure, its shape and movement, the texture of that beast, all born in a chip. Without that kind of computer hardware, it would just be a bucket of cold water. A technological wonder, of course. But what does it mean to those of us who still don't quite trust computers? The kind of realism and performance that you see on our system, I think, will be available um, on PC class machines. 
certainly within the next five years. And that'll give us all the chance to work with a far more humane computer once we wake it up. When they teach machines to communicate with us visually, we won't have to learn arcane computer commands. Instead of being rocket scientists, we can get on with life in our own world. This is what I wanted to do. Let's try one of these and see if I can take When Mark Hanna was still in college, he dreamt of a flight simulation game he could play on his own computer. And now, as chief scientist at Silicon Graphics, he can fly a fleet of imaginary planes through digital skies. Now, the question is, can a 727 do a roll? <laughs> and the answer is... Get around, get around, get around, get around, get around, get around. 